Hello, my name is Tony Rosinol, and yes, I'm a second year PhD student at MIT with Professor Luca Carlone. And today I will present our newest work on real time metric semantic uh, localization and mapping. So, um, the motivation for this work is basically to have fully autonomous robots that can achieve tasks given as human commands, such as asking a robot to bring us a cup of coffee. Now, what does a robot need to really know in order to bring us a cup of coffee? It certainly needs to know where it is in the world. Therefore, localization is at the base of this pyramid. It also needs to know what is the geometry of the scene, of the 3D scene surrounding it. The second element is therefore mapping. Finally, it is not sufficient to just know the geometry. One must also know uh, what is the semantic meaning of this geometry in order to know where to go next. So this is the next level. To achieve this uh, level of 3D scene understanding, we therefore have to provide our robot uh, with a metric semantic simultaneous localization and mapping algorithm, also known as metric semantics lamp. Therefore, we developed a uh, chimera. So what chimera tries to do is to build a semantically annotated 3D map from multiple images, like the one here, where we can see that there is a chair, a desk, a bin, etc. So this is the ideal 3D reconstruction we want with geom geometry semantically labeled, where we have in green objects representing chairs, we have desks in blue, etc. Obviously, this is an idealized 3D reconstruction. Let's first start with what are the inputs to Chimera. So Chimera receives stereo images provided by a stereo camera, as well as inertial information given by an inertial measuring unit or IMU, both provided, for example, by the Intel RealSense uh, sensor shown here. Let's have a quick overview of the different modules in Chimera. Here we use the Euroc dataset, which features a drone flying indoors. At the bottom left, you can see the image that the drone is seeing. While in the center, you can see, sorry, while in the center, you can see um, the, the position and orientation of the drone estimated by Chimera. As green dots, you can see the sparse 3D landmarks that Chimera tracks for localization. As you may notice, the 3D map uh, is sparse. Hence, we also quickly estimate the 3D geometry of the scene by triangulating the tracked key points in the 2D image that you can see at the bottom left and projecting the resulting 2D mesh in 3D. This mesh only occupies the immediate field of view of the drone. Therefore, we build a multi-frame 3D mesh that covers the area surrounding the drone, as you can see at the bottom right. The per-frame and the multi-frame 3D meshes are useful for fast obstacle avoidance, but they are approximate. Therefore, we also use a volumetric approach to build a dense 3D mesh to reconstruct the full 3D scene, as you can see now. This computation is lower, but still works in real time at 10 frames per second. Finally, by using a semantic segmentation of the 2D images that the drone is seeing, as you can see here on the right, and by using the global 3D mesh, we fuse the semantic information in 2D to 3D. On the right side, you can see a top-down view of the 3D metric uh, semantic reconstruction. So, so, okay, so we have already seen what Chimera generates. Now let's look at the different modules. On the left, we have the input to Chimera, basically a pair of stereo images and inertial measurements. The color boxes represent the four modules in Chimera. And the first module, module is Chimera VIO, which performs visual inertial odometry and estimates the 3D poses of the robot and triangulates 3D landmarks in the scene. These uh, resulting estimated 3D poses and 3D landmarks are then fed into the subsequent modules. And at the bottom of the figure, we have Chimera RPGO, which stands for Robust Post Graph Optimization, and estimates a global trajectory of the drone by detecting uh, loop closures. At the center of the figure, we have Chimera Measure, which builds the per-frame and multi-frame uh, 3D mesh. And at the top of the figure, we have Chimera Semantics which builds the global uh, 3D metric semantic mesh that you can see here. Okay, so let's now focus on Chimera VIO. So Chimera VIO tracks 2D key points in the images and solves a sliding window optimization problem over keyframes that minimizes the reprojection error by using structureless projection factors and incorporates the inertial measurements using pre-integration factors, resulting in the factor graph on the right. The result is an accurate 3D pose estimate together with 3D landmarks. Our pipeline is robust, works in real time, 
and achieves the best performance in the Europe dataset, and it is highly modular as well. Now let's look at Kimra RPGO, which solves a post-graph optimization problem with loop closures detected using a bag of words approach. So given the pairwise relative odometry estimates from Chimera VIO, which gives us a locally accurate estimate of the robot's pose, we further detect loop closures using DBAU2 and solve the pose graph in order to obtain globally accurate 3D poses. We solve this pose graph problem using an outlier robust optimization approach that checks for loop closure consistency as in PCM that we tailor to a single robot and online setup. This allows us to detect many loop closures with potential outliers without hurting performance. In this table, we show how our, how our approach is um, basically insensitive to the alpha parameter, which controls how many loop closures are detected. So while post graph optimization without PCM quickly degrades in accuracy, ours remain uh, insensitive to the parameter. Here we show our localization results. We evaluate our approach in the Europe dataset and we report the translational root mean square error, which quantifies the distance between estimated and ground truth poses. We run our approach in three modes, fixed lag smoothie, which is the sliding window approach for real time, for real time state estimation, full smoothie, which optimizes all the trajectory but without loop closures, and finally the last column uses loop closures. We compare our approach to well-known open source alternatives and show how we achieve superior performance compared to the other implementations. On the right, you see a figure of the estimated trajectory in color compared with the uh, ground truth in dice, as a dice line. So the problem is that Chimera VIO only generates a sparse 3D map, like the point cloud here. Therefore, we develop Chimera Measure, which reconstructs a dense 3D mesh from the 3D landmarks. Let's now look into Chimera Measure how it works. As input, Chimera Measure takes the 2D keypoints tracked so far by Chimera VIO in the current frame and the estimated sparse 3D landmarks of Chimera VIO. Then it builds a Delaunay triangulation over the 2D keypoints, resulting in a 2D mesh, and back projects this 2D mesh in 3D, resulting in a uh, per frame 3D mesh. This is possible because each 2D keypoint has an associated 3D landmark given by Chimera VIO. Then the multi we, we accumulate the per frame 2D meshes into a, a multi frame 3D mesh over the time horizon of the sliding window optimization of the VAO. Finally, in order to encode the semantic information, we reconstruct a dense semantically annotated 3D mesh using Chimera Semantics. Let's look into Chimera Semantics. So, as its input, Chimera Semantics takes a dead map, a semantic mask, and a 3D pose per frame. Then it integrates the depth and semantic information in a 3D volumetric grid by using Bayesian updates. The approach uses some approximations that allow real-time performance while only using the CPU, and it generates an accurate dense reconstruction of the scene with semantic labels, as you can see here. On the left, the estimated, on the right, the idealized ground truth one. Coming back to our picture on the original problem, Chimera provides us with a suite of modules that solve the problems of localization, mapping, and semantic 3D estimation. The combination allows us to generate a dense 3D metric semantic reconstruction of the scene. Hence, Chimera provides a metric semantic SLAM algorithm for 3D scene understanding that is accurate, robust, real-time, and also open source. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll be glad to take any questions you have. Uh, thanks for the talk. That was awesome. Uh, there's a couple of questions in the uh, Q&A box. Um, the first is a series of questions, so I'll ask them one by one. Uh, the first one is, can Chimera run without, so this is from Jigesh, uh, without the IMU, how reliable is it in that case? So we, we heavily um, um, rely on the IMU, actually. Uh, so right now, it's tightly integrated in the pipeline. We don't expect to make, decouple it in the short term, but it should be uh, possible to do it. Uh, uh, to do it basically because we use as our backend the GTSAM, which is very flexible in terms of what constraints you are using. Cool. The second part yeah. is, any plans to integrate your lab's recent work on GCN into Chimera? How easy is it considering the modularity of Chimera? So we, we actually did that in a decoupled way already. 
um, and that's in our newest uh, paper that we that was recently accepted to RSS, and it's called Chimera Scene Graphs, where we basically reconstruct the three D scene, but we also detect the objects and fit CAD models in these in these uh, three scenes. So it's decoupled in the sense that we don't optimize the pose of the draw or the semantic uh, reconstruction of the scene using teaser plus plus but we do we do use it to fit in an optimal way uh, 3d objects that we might have in a in a database cool and the last question is please comment on the future roadmap of chimera so th there's many okay so chimera was like mm, done last year almost so the next step was chimera scene graph we basically build a um, hierarchical graph uh, of semantic concepts that is uh, um, very useful for hierarchical path planning. At the same time, having semantics uh, uh, guiding how the path planning is done. So now we are basically working towards leveraging this new uh, map representation, which is really interesting. And I think I have another slide here showing what I'm talking about for the others. So yeah, here is the 3D dynamic scene graph where we have the metric semantic mesh built by Chimera, and then we extract the objects and agents in part using teaser plus plus. And then out of it, we extract a topological graph given that gives you what is the free space path that they are in this scene so that you can traverse it with a drone. And further, it segments the, the scene with rooms, buildings, and so on. And the idea now is to extend this into, into real life scenarios because everything we've done so far here is with uh, simulation. And in part, the problem that we have right now is that we need humans to walk around so that we show our capabilities, but now it's a bit, a bit hard to add. Oh, I think I have, muted. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. great. Uh, and then one more question from Mo, which is what is the main difference between the VIO and Chimera and other available VIOs such as VINs? Yeah, so um, uh, the main difference is first on the factors that we use, as we use, I think Vince also uses pre integration IME factors, but we use structureless uh, uh, projection factors, which are uh, intrinsically outlier robust. So our front end does not need to um, remove all the outliers and do all this bookkeeping to keep outliers out of the equation. Ours is intrinsically robust in this sense. And, and well, Obviously, we also encode the semantics on the on the whole pipeline. But compar comparing just Chimera VIO with Vins, um, that's the main difference. Also, the modularity and and how how well coded it is, I would say. So, feel free to actually um, uh, work on the open source uh, code if you if you think it's relevant. Um, I think I think um, I mean. As someone who doesn't work in perception very much, um, I have maybe what it's a very naive question, but how did you figure out what key points to track in the 2D frames? Was like, yep. Yeah, no, um, so we, we used a very standard approach actually. We didn't, we didn't delve into it too much. Um, so the, the idea being that our, our backend is robust to our layers and so on, so it doesn't really matter which feature detector you use. In our case, we use a fast feature detector, which is um, one that works very fast, um, but does not necessarily give you very reliable key point detections. But we, we've also, so the pipeline is made such that you can switch actually between detectors. You can use orb, you can use seed, you can use surf, whatever feature detector you want. In this sense, it's uh, very modular. I, I was just wondering if you're using a feature detection or something more data driven, but perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Um, there's, so you could, right? Uh, and we haven't experimented on the side, but that would be fairly easy to, to implement. And I've seen some feature detectors, ones that are presented in Eker, I think, as well, and that are very, very interesting. Awesome. Perfect.